Hello, I'm Joan Justice, and I'm here today with Kathleen Starr, PhD and Senior VP at Patient Marketing Group, an inventive health company. Kathleen has owned over 15 years of experience in the life science industry, translating behavioral insight into commercial strategy. Um, she's passionate about improving the patient experience and leveraging the psychology of behavior to create patient-centered solutions in healthcare. Kathleen's a panelist on our upcoming webinar on self-monitoring and empowering patients. And so I asked her here today to preview this topic with me and get some of her thoughts prior to the webinar. Um, Kathleen, what are your first thoughts on self-monitoring um, and helping patients take care of themselves? Well, you know, as a clinical psychologist, I mean, this is a real fundamental tool that we use. And it has been, it's shown to be effective in whether you're treating someone with depression or anxiety. In health psychology, um, we use self-monitoring to help people manage um, chronic conditions that have a lifestyle component like diabetes, pain management. It really is um, a fundamental kind of core to um, behavioral interventions. So um, big fan, use them a lot, um, and the, the science um, bears out their effectiveness. Yes, it's been shown to, to work. Okay, that's great. That's just um, perfect. I'm gonna, that's great. Um, and then my second question is how to motivate people. Um, you know, when, uh, for example, for overweight people, when bathroom scales and mirrors don't work, why should devices work? Why should a pedometer work, for instance? Well, you know, that, that is, that's really interesting, and that's something that I'm really um, kind of passionate about is kind of arming people with the right tools. And I think that there are some things that we need to think about what the tools are, like you said, a bathroom scale or a mirror. Well, it kind of depends on what people's goals and objectives are. Because when people go to, if the goal and objective is something really large and seems unattainable, that bathroom scale and that mirror, that's going to be intimidating and actually going to be really demotivating, right? So I think it's tying the tool, whether it's a pedometer, a scale, or a mirror, to something that people can achieve and they can feel that they can accomplish and breaking it down. Um, so I think a pedometer is a great, a great tool because maybe the first step is, hey, just wear it and just see how many steps mm -hmm. you take. That would be a first goal in kind of beha a behavior change, using that tool for behavior change. Uh-huh. Great. Thanks. Um, now... You know, the RAND study just came out on the corporate wellness programs, and it was shown that corporate, the corporate wellness programs just weren't all that they were cracked up to be. Um, I didn't read the full report, uh, but I read some articles about it, and I sent them on to you. And what are your thoughts on the, on the RAND study? Well, you know, and, and I read some commentary on it, and I haven't got through the whole thing, so I'll do, do a little clarifying. I think some of the things that are interesting is, um, again, what about the, um, the wellness programs? Um, are they designed, questions I would have, are they designed to tackle the, the issue of not only behavior change initiation, changing people's behavior, but also tackling keeping them and keeping um, the behavior going, so the positive behavior change, and getting into pay, behavior maintenance. Psychologically, we, we know from behavioral science, those are two really different mechanisms. So some of the things that I wonder is, are, are they using the same set of tools for initiation and assuming just doing more of the same, keep people going? So into a behavioral maintenance. So that would be one thing I would wonder um, and really want to look at the design of the different programs. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I think is important is also what we know is, you know, behavior change does not happen in a vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. It happens within a context. And our in the, the great the bigger environment can play a big role in that. Um, so again, what are what are wellness programs doing to create more of a culture of well health and wellness and not just identifying discrete um, changes in behavior that they think are going to have an ROI for the employer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Yeah, that, those are great thoughts. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your thoughts, Kathleen. And everyone, uh, please sign up for the free webinar on helping physicians empower their patients. Uh, you'll see or hear Kathleen there. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Thanks.